<laughs> and to my left, we got the head baseball coach of the Pirates, Cliff Godwin, joining us in studio. What's up, Coach? What's up, Cliff? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. I'm just looking at uh, your beard there. Um, you've got more gray than I do, and I thought that was impressive. So <laughs> mine's coming, though. I'm going to catch you. And there's a reason for that. You ha- have never worried about your team. I used to worry, but now, <laughs> as you brought up before we went on the air, I guess you heard me and Danny or, or saw something, uh, that now I do not worry about reloading and, and rebuilding this ECU baseball team year to year. These are from previous years when I used to worry. Well, I can just tell you how proud I am of you because there's some people you need to go talk to out in uh, the world. But I really haven't been on social media, so I don't see stuff. Uh, I tell our coaches that, you know, I post my devotionals, and if we're recruiting somebody, I'll go follow them on social media. But I just haven't scrolled. And you talk about being in a great mental headspace. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell's going on most of the time outside of what's happening at ECU baseball. It's great. The Celtics won the uh, championship. I did see to... that. I did watch ESPN. While, so, uh, I'll try to catch you up. But, uh, yeah, that's probably a good thing. I am too addicted uh, to do that, but maybe one day yeah. I can put my phone down. But I can watch Alec Burleson hit bombs in the big Man. leagues. That's been great. He has been, uh, he has been on a tear, and uh, cool to see Connor Norby get yeah. caught up. I saw you and uh, some Blake. folks were down to see uh, Armstrong yeah, as so, well. Yeah, so Blake Hardigree, our director of baseball operations, and myself, we flew down for a quick trip on Friday. Uh, watched the Friday game, which he did not play, but we were down on um, down on the field for BP. Sean Armstrong, we went through him to get BP passing tickets because I didn't want to bother Norby. Hey, you just right. still would getting caught yeah. up in your family, and we'll take care of that. And so it was great to see both those guys and to see Norb's smile when he was stretching. He turned around and looked and saw Blake and I on the field. As Blake said, it there, there's not a monetary value for that. And then, of course, he played on Saturday. Um, had one hit his last at bat but one of the coolest things you talk about a god moment i'm sitting here blake sitting to my right just another lady and her husband are sitting next to blake norby fouls the ball off it goes straight back it ricochets off the column behind us blake sees it coming lady's ducking because she's gonna get smoked <laughs> blake makes a really a top 10 wow jim grabs it and he has a real major league foul ball off Connor Norby. Connor Norby. Yeah. And that is very rare right now. So uh yeah, yeah. you might want to throw that one on eBay. I don't know. Uh, he's gonna get it signed for <laughs> his son Graham. So that is awesome. <laughs> Speaking of the Norbies and we kind of start here. Ethan Norby was awesome uh all year, but but especially postseason and was a I was able to meet his dad and that reminds me, Cliff, that that Saturday game against Wake Forest So just to set it all up, so the night before, you guys lose uh, the day before, and that night I put out, because I'm a very positive person, Coach, I said, hey, we've done this before, we were in this scenario, and it led to one of my all-time favorite ECU games, and I showed the picture of Jake Agnos tipping the hat. Jake contacts me and says, hey, man, I'm going to be there Saturday. So I'm like, oh, man, this is all coming together now. Yeah, yeah, hey, Cliff, you saw it. You foreshadowed (laughs) it. I did. (laughs) So Jake was there. I I met up with him on uh, kind of above y'all's dugout. He had to go to a wedding because a couple of former pirates yep. were getting married that day. Uh, so Dusty, he left. Dusty Baker and Matt Bridges. There you go. About Not to each other, to their wives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're standing there with Jake. He's leaving. Chandler and I are up there. And that is when ECU starts hitting the ball. Dixon hits the bomb. So we're like, we can't leave now. And we were told not to leave by your mother. Oh, so, my goodness. Mr. Miss Superstition herself. We are there. She won't let us leave. And then we're surrounded by the McChrystals, the Wilcoxons, uh, Wyatt's parents were there. And we became part of the family for like three or four innings. It was really cool. But it also – it. I've said it before, just and this goes from people outside of the baseball players' families, but the family that is ECU baseball is so tight. Danny talked about it last week, and it is something special. College sports has changed so much. It's so pro and almost like fake and glossy and Hollywood now that some things still feel real, and I feel like ECU baseball is still one of them things. They're still, um, you know, I've – haven't done any interviews because it's been such a busy time with recruits and of course exit meetings and you know other jobs and and stuff like that so uh it's been a lot going on but that's the foundation of our program it's been here for a long time dating back to when coach leclerc um you know started this thing when i was a part of it and the culture 
and they're still the Trey Savages of the world who are crying on the mound when I take him out of the Wake Forest game because of how much this place means to him. Um, Carter Cunningham, of course, Riley Johnson. I mean, I could keep going. Justin Wilcox and Joe Guarini, Danny Bill, all the guys that have been in our program for a long time. And uh, there's still guys out there. And even when we're recruiting portal guys, it's not just the talent. It has to be a good fit. Right. Um, obviously, we got a local – uh, infielder, um, and I don't want to comment too much because I don't want to get myself don't in trouble. Hey, hey, well, NCAA, we're worried about hey, what Coach Godwin says, but we can take bags of cash to players, so I'm not real sure um, if priorities. Hey, priorities are where it need to be, <laughs> but anyway, it's not just a great player, it's a great family, it's a great fit. Like, they want to come, and yeah, they want to come develop as the player that they can become because we have a great coaching staff, but they want to win, they want to be a part of something that they can bring their kids back to. Now, every kid, obviously, there's guys that leave her that doesn't mean anything to them which is fine but ECU baseball the foundation will always be like that and, and clip not to get on my tangent about nil but i want make sure i say this on every interview i have is baseball is so much different than football and basketball we only have 11.7 scholarships you can only have 32 of the 40 players that are on your team that can actually receive aid so if you go around the field this past year, and I'll, I'll do the guys that are no longer in our program, Justin Wilcox was on 25% this year for the first time in his career. He's been in our program yeah. for five years. Yeah. Joey Barini has never received $1 of scholarship from ECU because you have to have eight players within on your roster that are good players that are not getting a scholarship. Um, Carter Cunningham hadn't been on scholarship the last two years. Yeah, he was able to get a little bit of NIL, but he's paying out-of-state tuition. He's still in debt. Trey Savage was on uh, 25% this year. And I would say he probably broke even, maybe made a couple thousand dollars with NIL, but he's having to pay $40,000, take away the 25% scholarship to come to school. So it's not like we're writing checks to, hey, here's 50 on top. On top we're, of, we're there's not, nothing no, on No, there's top. nothing yeah. on top. It's We're just trying to help families out to cover costs. And I think that when people are disgruntled about NIL and, hey, I don't want to keep writing checks. Well, at least for baseball, look, you know that they're not getting rich. They're just trying to cover uh, cost of the, the players' families. Yeah, I think that is what it was designed to do. We we have some guys here that will do interviews with us, and uh, the, the T-shirts were very successful. Kids like them. Adults like them. It was really cool being out of the ballpark, seeing all of J.C. shirts and Danny. And I think that was kind of what it was designed to do, not, you know, like you said, have a bag of money, throw it at them. So um, the 23 Club is, is helping out with that? Yeah, they are. And uh, I would tell you that if – You've got a dollar or two, and you want to invest into EC baseball, give it to the 23 Club. This is the time of year that we need it most because, um, you know, this is the time that we're trying to give stuff to our returning players, but obviously we're still recruiting, and we only have 11.7 scholarships. So uh, really to be able to get your foot in the door with any of these guys that have the ability to help us win, you have to cover all their costs, or you can't even get your foot in the door. I've kind of, uh, I think from some of your own words, but you're, you're kind of looked at as anti-NIL and portal. Like, if you had your way, we would, it would be different. I'll it say would, that. Yeah, it would definitely be different. I mean, I think any college coach right now sure. that is in this disaster of a formula that we're in, and just to give everybody the whole landscape, so I want you to think about this. So you end the season – Guys can go into the portal. They can go in. I think it started in the May. Well, the portal doesn't close until July 2nd at 1159 p.m. We have to send out scholarship papers or non-renewals to guys within our team on Your our team yeah. by July 1st. That's the NCAA rule. So all of our juniors, the drafted guys, I have to tell them, hey, look, you're getting a non-renewal letter on July 1st. But if you don't get drafted where you want to, you call me, we'll figure it out. How are we going to figure it out? I, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. You have to believe in Coach Godwin that, hey, we'll get you some money, whether it be scholarship or NIL money, and to, at minimum, cover what you were on last year, but most likely have to give you a little bit more. So that's why the 23 club is so big right now. And then you get the draft. You throw the draft in there. Well, the draft's not until July 14th, 15th, 16th. So scholarship papers go out July 1, renewals or non-renewals. The portal closes on July 2nd at 11.59, and then you've got the draft in the middle of July. So do you think that's a very sequential lineup there? Of no. You, no, it's terrible. And I'm just trying to get all those dates in, in my head. <laughs> so what would be 
Uh, let's say we keep the portal draft. Yeah. Everything's the same, but what move when the, move the the non renewal like to send the scholarship papers behind the draft at least? That would be pretty easy to do too, right? Well, I mean the NCAA, you would think, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, and I would say that the portal window needs to close too before the scholarship papers have to be sent out. Yeah. The draft and the portal window need to happen before scholarship papers get sent out. Speaking of the portal, uh, it gives, it, it takes away. Um, and we've seen that with East Carolina, with Zach Root, Bristol Carter, some others moving on from the program. And I don't know how much you can talk about guys coming into the program, but it's uh, it's a revolving door, and, and you just do the best to keep up with it. I mean, yeah. any any thoughts on Bristol and, and Zach leaving the program? Um, look, they're both talented players. Obviously, they didn't believe in ECU baseball enough to stay here. And that's really all I have to say. I will say this. Uh, you know, I wish I would have probably mentally handled the AMAC situation a lot better. Um, but if a kid walks into my office after being in my uh, being in my backyard on Tuesday afternoon in my pool eating our food and walks into my office the next morning in his exit meeting and says, hey, just want to let you guys know I'm going into the portal and doesn't say thank you, and we helped him develop, and I look at him straight in the face and say, sounds good. I don't have any time for you. So I don't mean that ugly, but yeah. hey, look, you are going on and we're going to move on. We're going to get the right players in our program. And um, you've heard me say it, and this might sound just bet against us, man. If you don't believe in us, then bet against us. And as you said it, you've done it a lot. It hasn't always worked not out. Not a well smart for you. bet. Yeah. So, and uh, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I would not bet against the Pirates because uh, the track record says that pretty, you're going to pretty confidently win 44 games at least 40 or more for the past six years you're going to be in the talk the hosting a regional have we done what everybody wants us to do no we have not but it's literally the only thing that i said we were going to do 10 years ago in my press conference almost to the date today is the 24th tomorrow will be 10 years wow. since i had my press conference in 2014 we've done everything except go to omaha and if people think that it's easier to do that today than it was five years ago they're crazy as hell because it's harder today to do it and harder to be consistent not just on the field, but in the classroom, everything, because it's just easier for guys to leave at any point in time. I mean, if you have a bad day, you can get pissed off and you can leave. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's not real how real life. I mean, if you have a bad day at work, you can't just quit. You don't have another job lined up. Nah, that would uh, <laughs> that would suck. I'd have to come in and apologize to Ellerby the yeah. following day. <laughs> that's so. right. That's right. Cliff Godwin here. Cliff, I've been waiting for the right time to bring this up. but Oh, uh, oh wow. This is scary right now. And I want to say that you got a good track record of being an honest man, man of integrity. Yeah. But you did lie to me earlier this year. You said you weren't going to get ejected. And we had a bet. Well, I did not lie to you. We put the line down. We, we put did put line a line down. And I, I think there's some very uh, little about the over under line. I think there's a little bit of discrepancy from what you're saying now compared because <laughs> I had thought to, it was at one and a half. No, it was two and a half. But hey, you know what? I'll still take. I'll take you out to dinner because you know what? I got thrown out twice. You did get thrown yeah, out twice. I got thrown out twice. Brian yeah. Bailey's a part of this as well. I thought, and you're right. I've seen a lot of people saying Cliff needs one more ejection, or Cliff, you just won the bet. I really, I need to go back you to, to go media back, day. You need to go back to to media day and pull that up. And and I don't think we need to find that out right now. But I mean, <laughs> okay, if, if you want enough. to, if we can. I mean, but uh, we'll, hey, we'll, regardless, I'll still take you out to uh, a lunch or a dinner clip yeah. on me. How about that? I'm I'm just shocked coach that you you did say you weren't going to get thrown out this year i did not say i would not we set a line and danny bill said that i hey i don't think coach she's going to get thrown out well somebody oh, that was it was okay. a player that says Maybe i don't so. think because we had gone like almost 75 percent of the way through the season until i got thrown out the first time yeah you 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 got them pretty late in the year yeah both of yeah, them so yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Brian Bailey chiming in says it was one and a half. So okay, well Bailey, but again I, he's biased because he's part of the bet. Yeah, so. but that's fine, Bailey. Uh, that's fine. I mean, look, I I don't bet a whole lot. No, I definitely don't in a casino or anything like that because I hate wasting money and I don't normally win. So and I never win, so I'm excited. This is one of the few bets yeah. I think I've actually won, cool. and I might have not even won it. Yeah, but so all right, hey. If we'll pick a spot, we'll pick a spot. There you go. Uh, maybe one win. We need to get you out Wednesday at AJ's for some sports trivia. I think DB said he's coming with some guys this week, but come hang out with us one Wednesday night if you're in town. All right. 
nights are gonna be a little bit tough because if i am home i'm not home a lot in the summer just because right. hey, we got recruits and we got a recruit coming in tomorrow got dinner with them but uh i will take you guys out to lunch at some point in time you guys pick the spot all right i don't know if bailey's invited though since he thinks he knows what he's talking about but we'll see all right brian <laughs> bailey will join us at four we'll get his reaction to that all right um got a few questions coming in we'll get those in uh does fans contributing to nil make it more <laughs> that's a good question would, make it more reasonable when they complain or are critical on the team see uh i would say that that is another thing and it's more of the players because you think they're professionals because they're making when when i say they're making money yeah um baseball players at ecu are not making money they are covering costs but obviously in football and basketball because they're on a full ride they're making some money that's another thing i had a problem with nil is that these guys are not professionals and we can't treat them like professionals from the fan standpoint because it's a real thing. You start at, hey, if I pay you five grand and you go 0 for 5 and yeah. check out five times, you're like, hey, man, why am I paying this dude five grand? Yeah. That's just a natural reaction sure. because you're investing your money into an individual, but they're not professionals. They're college kids. I think a lot of these people, too, it's kind of natural to be jealous, and they're sitting there in the stands, and they're like, this quarterback makes more money than I do. And it, But I don't know if that's the case necessarily here at East Carolina, no. especially yeah. with baseball. I know oh, it's yeah. not the case. Yeah. But uh, even with the other sports, but I think there's part of that to it as well. Well, and it's not the kid's fault necessarily. No, if somebody's it, handing it, you yeah, money. It's, it's the NCAA has put this system in that is allowing people to get paid. And then – but that's the thing I would tell you that when we're dealing with these portal kids is, you know, if they're looking as I met, I met with the incomers on Wednesday with their parents. And I said, if you're looking to get rich, you don't need to be in this room. Like we're developing baseball players to be the best version of self. And we're developing human beings. You will have a great experience here. We'll develop you to the best pitcher. You can be the best hitter. You will win championships. You will be a better person. Walk out the door here. And that's what I think my parents would have wanted. But I would tell you that if you're looking to get rich, wrong place. Don't look at your phone, Coach. I had that text that just came in. Who, who's it from? It's from uh, Name Redacted. Oh, really? Former friend, Stephen Iga. Oh, really? A mortal enemy of mine. Yeah, is he a mortal enemy? Huge uh, fan of Pirate Radio. Listens to the show all the time. He just had an update on the bet. That I'm not, you... not going to read. Hey, I just saw it from a peripheral. Hey, Shirley, 2.5. <laughs> 2.5 so it looks like clip and brian bailey is taking me out to lunch son of a gun this one backfired <laughs> coach my summer is slam man i got all this stuff going hey, on just the fact that there was some confusion and i appreciate hey you not doubting me anymore i'm still gonna take you and bailey out to lunch Boom. all right see folks if you're positive you got a good mindset yep. good things happen yep. all right uh, another question from the youtube chat why aren't schools able to have players well, I mean, this is kind of a big picture question why aren't schools uh able to have players sign contracts to stay more than a year is there an actual rule that states you cannot do that um is that now, like your well, now now the ncaa is saying that uh um, you can transfer as much as you want so another thing they want you to you they want you to commit the ncaa wants you to commit to a player for four years like with their scholarship but they can walk out the door every year is that a one-sided contract would you say it is as far as i understand though and i don't think this happens a lot but like these scholarships are year to year the players well, are year not, to year not even not anymore no not anymore okay no no so and a coach can tell a player you're done but you're, you get, when you recruit them wanted, they still wanted to go the way the scholarship works if you tell cliff guy well, hey look you're not good enough to play here anymore they can look at you and go, okay, no problem. I'm still going to East Carolina. So you still have to all honor their scholarship, even though they're not on the baseball team. Gotcha. Now, most guys, because they want to go play somewhere, would go play go it. somewhere yeah. else. But that's the letter of the law. Hmm. All so, right. But if you go into the portal, then that obviously makes the contract null and void. Uh, another question How big has recruiting become through social media like Twitter? Would coach say that's a good or a bad thing? I mean, look, there our coaches get inundated by emails, DMs, all that stuff. Um, look, I don't know how many players are in the portal. It's thousands. And somebody told me a stat like 51% of the players that go into the baseball portal don't even find a, uh, a spot, which is actually sad because we're telling or encouraging guys to utilize this, and then they don't even find a spot to go. All right. Uh, Josh says, question, is Cliff Goblin going to leave ECU? 
Um, I'm still here. <laughs> right. It's by, by choice that I'm here. It's not because um, of any other reason. I believe in this place. I believe that we can win a national championship. I know we do it the right way. And I know some of our fans are frustrated because we haven't been to Omaha yet. And look, there's nobody more frustrated than myself. If you'd have told me 10 years ago we'd be in year 10 and we hadn't done it, I'd have pushed all my chips in the middle clip and said hey i'm all in and i'll take that bet and unfortunately but if it would have happened here earlier maybe i'm not the head coach here and i'm just being totally transparent with you so there you go. um but i've had opportunities to leave uh this year and years past and um i want to be here i'm not just saying this because you're here you can go back i said it last week and i've said it previously that i i don't think people enjoy the ride enough i know the goal is to get to <laughs> omaha and i get the disappointment you don't go to the college world series that's the ultimate fans want to go fans want to see the mm-hmm. ecu there but did you not have fun from february to june and <laughs> and winning a regular season championship and hosting a re- getting a regional here I, I i really do think and bethany bradshaw has to never take this for granted it's easy to take things for granted when they happen every year so at minimum people were saying all right we're gonna have a regional here in greenville that's tough to do you would sit here and uh and, and know teams, that better than anybody how many teams have hosted so we hosted 18 19 21 22 and 24 so obviously 20 doesn't count so five out of the six season we've hosted regionals yeah i'm gonna say less than a handful I and i don't know know the yeah. fact but you've got old miss they won a national championship two years ago they haven't made a regional in two years so you have to be careful what you ask for as well and the consistency now we haven't been to the pinnacle we haven't played in the college world series we haven't won but the consistency of what we do who's done it better yeah and to get to the promised land omaha you have to go to regionals and go to super regional you're you're I, that to me is is a go good one season step forward, f- farther here how much economic impact when we host a regional in june does it bring to greenville north carolina yeah it's over a million dollars like it was a million dollars like back in 19 so i can only imagine what it is now but just that and the excitement you know building up until the regional it's like i mean i think it's like a bowl game it is like i mean you would be able to tell me better than that no it's um but it's unbelievable and one of the biggest reasons that i'm sitting here in front is obviously that i believe in our players and our coaching staff but when Chad Tracy comes back in town with his family, when Jeremy Schumacher comes back in town and Garrett Blackwater and Gav and Chip Davis, they all like make sure I'm fed after we have a tough loss on Friday against Evansville at my house. That's the best time of my life. And if you don't think it's real emotion when we lose on Monday and like how tough of a place I was mentally Tuesday morning to the point of my agent calling me going, hey, school X wants to talk to you. I said, if I got to talk to anybody today, it's no, I ain't talking to nobody today. And I just tell you, because I am a human being and I do believe in this place. If I didn't believe in it with all my heart and soul, I wouldn't be here. After you lost that game on Monday, you apologized like to the team and to the fans for not winning. And I I, kind of said, I feel like that's why Cliff doesn't like the negativity because he feels like the fan like the fans are part of this like they, they are they are they are a huge piece of it i mean we wouldn't have been able to got to the championship game if it hadn't have been for the fans and their intensity and stuff and um but also and this nobody wants to talk about this and i'm just gonna say it publicly why should we have won we threw two pitchers on monday that both knew they were leaving and i didn't know they were leaving i'd have thrown position players so the guy that started and the guy that gave up three run homer they went to the portal on wednesday they knew they were leaving hmm. so and i told danny bill that and you know it sucks for him to hear it but it's the truth man like that's not what ecu baseball has been built on and um unfortunately i don't know i can't get into the heads of individuals or we would have pitched somebody differently speaking of danny uh just a, an amazing guy he was around here uh intern with us was uh was a guest with us and uh just a, such a a great guy he gave you everything you gave him everything and uh the way he talked about his relationship to ecu baseball it's uh he, he was i think shed a tear or two when he joined us last week uh just thinking about it but man he uh he's what you want we talked about in the past the hoovers the bills those, those types of guys 
I mean, Danny, man, uh, you know, it's almost like a running joke with me and him. I'd like watch him hobble out of the bullpen and be like, this is the guy we're going to in this crucial situation right here. He looks like uh, a worse version of me jogging and I've got a knee <laughs> replacement. Um, but I just appreciate it. He gave us everything he had, every ounce of it. Um, he would come. I mean, and, and look, he did. I didn't think he would do it and he did it. He turned into Matt Bridges and Cam Colmore in their sixth year in 21 where he'd walk in my office. Well, first he'd go tell AK and then AK would send him to my office be like, hey, I'm good today. And AK would be like, go talk to coach <laughs> <laughs> and i look Man. at him and be like hey danny seriously like you coach i'm good and i'm like all right he run him out yeah. there yeah and i haven't even i talked to you about this but so he'd be on the show and rarely you'd, you'd be listening and he'd say something and you correct him immediately via phone or either he'd be uh on the show and uh we'd, we'd wrap up a yeah. segment and then you would text him about he need to get some work in or something and just like the way his attitude changed, I guess, from day one to day whatever, where he used to be terrified of you and maybe hate you a little bit when they first come in, yeah. to now it's like, all right, Cliff, I got you. Like it, the the maturity, the relationship changes with your guys throughout oh, yeah. the years, right? For sure. Um, you know, the relationship that I had with Danny, obviously, uh, in his fourth year is a lot different than his freshman year. And he would tell you he needed to get tougher and, you know, get better at some th certain things. But his career changed when he was – up to changing arm slots and moving his arm around i mean then he became like a dude for us yeah. and to his credit he was coachable um called cam colmore obviously leaned on cam and uh coach knight and coach deets everybody like helped him a ton um and you look up and he had one of the most unbelievable seasons as far as the workload he took yeah. on especially when you know shink went down and you look up and what he's done the past two years in our, our baseball program is unbelievable and something else that helped him cliff was uh the you talk about being player led and having those leaders he said tyler smith helped him out early on he, he was like tyler is it like this all the time I, I can't do this and he was like dude stick through it trust me you'll be all right and he was so now it's danny telling that the young guys then it's going to be that young guy you know yeah. you, you've got it rolling like that yeah. which is a awesome thing well the, one of the 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 moments that i knew that we we're going to be good next year is when i was meeting with dixon williams in his exit interview he said look we're out in right field i mean left field we're crying we're hugging and he goes ethan norby walked up to me and goes hey it's our time now like hey we got to get to work because we're not doing this again and that gives me chill bumps Man. because that's a ton of maturity in a very tough moment and those are two sophomores that are going to be juniors next or well actually a freshman and a sophomore um with ethan being a sophomore next year and dixon being a junior uh a couple more questions chad says i've never said a bad thing about coach and love green county can i come to lunch i don't know chad's a big boy like me that might be a big tab i, <laughs> I don't know i'll see if i can get you in chad uh mike p said any chance coach has enough pull to get a men's lacrosse team at ecu uh, we're, we're still fighting title nine battles and uh, we can't add any more males so, yeah. I mean, hey call john gilbert on that one but uh yeah <laughs> that's you above my pay grade uh jamie brings up campbell so is it true i've seen this floated out there is it an exaggeration i've seen 30 players in the portal i know their head coach left that's uh that's what i've heard too but uh i'm Sound gonna be honest with you i don't i don't log on to the portal that's coach knight coach palumbo coach lartigue Bryant Packard loves the portal. Cayman Chris, our student manager, loves the portal. <laughs> Franny's getting involved in the portal. Okay. So they bring me good players. So and they kind of look it over. They say, well, they here's do a, all the homework. some names. They do all the homework and then go, hey, this guy, Clip Brock, is you know the next Nolan Ryan, and then we'll follow up from there. Right. Nolan Ryan never won a Cy Young Award. Crazy that is stat, right? crazy. Yeah. Because he threw like seven no hitters, didn't he? He did. Most no hitters, no Cy Youngs. Here's some trivia that's, for you. That's impressive. Um, I was watching an old Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. You ever watched that or Seinfeld? I never got, I never, Seinfeld is something that I know I probably should watch at some point in time. Never got to it. Never got into it. Huh. Um, and I have never watched an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. They were talking about how you gotta, if you got bad news or something bad to say, you need to lead off with some positive stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that trick here. Uh, Johnny Stats, Johnny Robertson's got one. He so said, you got a question that you're about to ask me. This it's not negative, negative but yeah, it's, it's like fine, uncomfortable whatever. to kind of ask you about. The stats. <laughs> but Johnny's got a good one here. First coach, uh, Cliff Godwin, only coach in the nation to win either a regular season or a conference tournament title each of the last six seasons. Put that one on the resume. Well, I don't – no offense. Uh, 
I don't do it to pad my resume. I'm glad our players and our coaches have done a good job, and they do it the right way. So, But thanks for bringing that up. Something for the recruiting pitch. Yeah, you no doubt. Yeah. Um, and now a question. What happened at the end of that Evansville game? Um, so not being very specific because I can't say everything that happened, but obviously – I mean, everybody in our dugout, even when J.C. hit the ground ball to second, like I just threw the second baseman and threw it in the dugout. Like I just – there was no way that that was the way it was going to end. So our guys' hearts are ripped out. And yeah. You're there just trying to take in that moment and just like, you know, like this really just happened. And they're dogpiling, but, you know, they had a few players that were giving us the finger and uh, using the F word and called us F and P's. And uh, so um, – I don't take – I mean, because I know what our kids are going through. So, when I went to home plate, I just told their head coach that you need to learn how to win with class. And he said that, Coach, we've never been here before, and we don't know how to uh, how to handle this. And I said, well, it's your job for them to know how to handle this. And so um, – and that was the gist of it. But I knew that we couldn't shake their hands as a team. But I – all of our coaches shook their coaches' hands. Yeah. But it was too raw for our guys to shake their hands at that point in time, especially the way they – did some things and look i know that he's not the players but if our play i would have stopped that immediately because that's not winning with class and especially on our home field and what our guys had poured into it so um i just thought it was best that we didn't shake their hands as a team i told jj there just would probably be something nasty that happened and that's not good for either side well i don't know if you have beat this into the players or if the players just have this for themselves but everybody i talked to about kind of admiring a home run or doing or any kind of getting excited and and they uh, we see like on a double they'll look to your bench That's, celebrate i mean it's, yes it's, it's if, something that if I they do it in. for those guys for the yeah. team okay if they're why, doing it at the other team why, why are we going to show yeah. up the opposing team there i mean go. and zach agnes i'll throw him under the bus but we're playing two lane in 21 and we beat him three out of four times but the game we lost zach hit a three-run homer and we got beat by one run and he hit a three-run homer and he's like running base he's like popping off at the pitcher and stuff and then next time he came up the guy struck him out I'm like hey dude you think he would have struck you out if you hadn't have been running around the bases running your mouth like probably not because he wouldn't have been like so doubt but he was like hey man like yep. you got but i'm getting you this time and it's just look i'm all for like showing positive emotion and pumping up your team but why do we have to disrespect the other team i just don't think that's the thing to do so that's the way we do it all right uh kenny says and we, we talked to trey savage earlier today we'll play that interview on the show and uh he is uh going to be drafted in this year's major league baseball draft another one for cliff godwin and the pirates kenny says coach how much enjoyment how proud are you when you get a chance to watch former ecu players continuing their careers oh man it's awesome you know one of my fondest moments was you know almost a year ago to the date when gavin made his debut and you know fly to cleveland and um he got a standing o and like he didn't even pitch that great he gave up five runs but he got standing o coming off the field it was a tight game by their fans and i was like man that's unbelievable like that's gavin that's like our guy you know and uh obviously seeing burley do what he's been man. doing and norby just with the brief call up but he's been playing so well and, and there's others you know um you know sean armstrong and jeff hoffman i did not coach i had no but their pirates man to see them perform at a high level so you know two weeks ago whenever norby was up we had five guys in the big leagues i know gavin was rehabbing yeah. five guys from east carolina big leagues that's pretty cool yeah and uh, a ton coming through the minors right now shirley does a good job keeping up with how those guys saw josh moylan uh, hit a day yeah, yep, yep. So, good to see good to see yep. how about uh summer ball cliff do you know off the top of your head how many pirates are playing summer ball right now i don't have hey, a list in front of hey, me. i don't have a list in front of me we got me get shirley to help me out but uh, <laughs> we definitely have we have some guys playing i would say it's probably the least amount of guys uh obviously we had an older team this past year yeah. um dixon's up in the new england collegiate league playing um you know we got a couple guys at bethesda in the um, cal ripkin league um, we got some other guys around um doing some other things but like uh, norby and de lorenzo they're back working out with the new guys um and uh walker baron obviously had to have surgery um with his jaw when he broke his jaw run to the guy uh, in the conference tournament against rice and mm. a lot of people don't even know this but he wasn't available for the regional um because we got x-rays and they said he couldn't play with a football helmet on with the mask i was like hey man i need to exhaust we need to exhaust all possible scenarios because we're we don't have a lot of right-handed bats and he's one of our best ones yeah. so but the doctors didn't think it was safe for him to play which uh he he missed the regional as well and i know he would have had at least one at bat against that lefty from evansville when 
when we weren't being able to do anything offensively. So, um, but he's actually back in town. And he's actually gotten the wires out of his mouth, um, oh, but he's still got rubber bands and stuff. And of course, he's lost a, a few pounds because he had his mouth wired sh- shut for a couple weeks. I need to go on that diet. <laughs> um, speaking of injuries, Jamie says he likes uh, Riley Johnson's Karate Kid move. Um, he said he had to use his legs to celebrate because his shoulders were in such bad shape he couldn't use his arms. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's accurate. Yeah. Um, I actually just saw Riley. So he had his left labrum fixed, uh, I guess it was last Monday, not this Monday, last Monday. So he's up moving around. And then, you know, about a month later, he'll have his right one done. So um, and he'll get those both hey, tacked down so we don't uh, have to run onto the field every time he dives next year. I was asking all year, is there a an American gold glove or a college baseball gold glove? The answer is yes. And uh, Riley Johnson earned that gold glove and also was the defensive player of the year in the American. So glad to see he was uh, rewarded for it. Absolutely. He is unreal to watch out it there, is. man. I mean, I, I would have to say he's the best center fielder I've ever coached, especially under circumstances, the way his shoulders were. Um, but, you know, I would argue that just as much as Carter, he was the MVP of our position player group just because he was the star, the straw that stirred the drink, so to speak, and brought a ton of energy to our team. I said that. Um, Wyatt and I think Danny went with uh, Cunningham. Yeah. I went with Riley. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, good when you have an argument about who should be yeah, MVP. Yeah, you got a lot of good players. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex Harper has a question. Would you like to ask it into the mic or you want me to read it? I was just going to ask, I typed in the YouTube comments, do you have any advice for a Little League baseball coach? On Not a Little a League coach? baseball coach. I do. I have a lot of advice. No <laughs> offense. Um, I actually was talking to uh, my former or my roommate from college, John Williamson, and he's getting into the travel ball stuff uh, because mm-hmm. his kids are getting that age, but he's actually helping coaching. And he was just going on a rant this morning at about 7 a.m. Just I, The Little League coach, they need to t- get the kids to – learn how to play anything the right way if i'm making sense it's more about hey let's go out here let's run onto the field let's run the bases the right way let's play catch hey with hey us not just chasing the ball like little stuff like that and making sure that they have a good attitude they're working hard and they're having fun of course but the technical part of the swing or a pitching mechanic let them go play wiffle ball in the backyard. They'll figure that out. They'll figure out how their body moves. But I think we're getting into this world of teaching them how to swing at a such young age or pitching at a such young age. We're forgetting to teach them how to play the game of baseball or play basketball or play football. Because I can tell you this, and I did this on a podcast like last fall. If you want to stand out today, when I go watch a tournament, just play hard because nobody plays hard. It's crazy. Yeah. So if you're not playing hard and you know a coach is showing up to recruit you, you think you're going to do it when I'm here? No. Not unless, hey, I'm having to put my foot up your butt every day, which that's not fun for a coach. We actually, when you get to college, want to teach them how to hit, how to pitch, how to field a ground ball better, not the parts of the game you should have learned at a young age, if that makes sense. And you really to... focus it on what you can control. And if your kid strikes out, don't yell at them about striking out. Hey, if they didn't work hard that week, talk to them about not working hard, but not in the moment of striking out because nobody's going up to the plate trying to strike out. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. It's kind of like concerning when the amount of kids that get to like the 12, 13 year old range, which I feel like at that point, you should probably know how to play the game of baseball and just, you know, simple scenarios like runner on second, hit the left field, like where's the ball need to go? And they're, they don't know. So. Yeah well that's your job it is uh, but that, i mean they don't, don't alex know. sorry uh to hear about kiwanis losing in the city championship yeah. second year in a row made the city championship and uh fell short just can't get to the uh can't get to the, <laughs> the big one just can't get to the big but one, the man. ride was great right? the ride was great <laughs> yeah that's yeah. awesome well hey so you coach little league <laughs> yes sir yeah well that's awesome dude Appreciate keep pouring it. back into them man Try. that's awesome i'm trying my best uh jerry great question can't believe i forgot to ask about this uh what can be done to the give the number one seed more an advantage in the conference tournament cliff there's a lot of formats in these conference tournaments and uh, you, you want to see maybe a change in the american yeah for sure and look i'll take some blame for it because we have a head coaches meeting every year but in 2000 it all stems back to 2018 so in 18 we had weather so before 18 um 
the two seed and the seven seed, and I can't remember what the other two, but four, uh, four teams played two games on Tuesday, but the one seed didn't play until Wednesday, up until 2018. But then we had weather come. So in 18, they were like, hey, everybody's got to play on that first day because we feel like weather's coming in the back. So then they just kept it that way. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. But now with 10 teams, I think the smart thing to do is to have a play-in game, a single elimination, seven through 10. They play on Tuesday. So they've got to throw their best arms to get to play the one and two seed on Wednesday. And Wednesday, at least you're a, far, a day farther back. Not that we would flip around Trey Savage from Thursday to Wednesday, but then you only have to play one game where you're number one does not pitch no. does that make sense because if even if you lose on wednesday then you would play on thursday also can we get this the the dumbest thing to me is east carolina hosting a regional because they earned it and being the away team in the game that is the dumbest thing i well, think in sports yeah well you know catch 22 from the standpoint so we're home game one we lose we have to flip a coin which J.J. always flips the coin, and believe it or not, he's actually pretty good at it. So he wins the coin toss. So we're home against Wake Forest. So we had been home the first two games. Well, you immediately know, hey, after you win that second game, like, hey, man, like you're going to be visitor against, that was VCU. Well, then, you know you're going to be visitor against Evansville. I have a problem in the winner-take-all game, and you're the one seed. So Evansville, we played them three times. They were the home team two out of the three times. Yeah. That's the issue I have makes no sense yep. home team that, that you're literally at home you earned right. your spot right be the home team right um all right we're about out of time real quick mike p says has a parent's behavior uh on at the field or off the field ever impacted your recruitment of a kid absolutely i mean i would say that you're recruiting the parents because the parents are the ones that uh raised the young man that's going to come into your program so 100 percent. and yeah. i would say more so today than 10 years ago Kenny asking, how did you feel uh, about Dixon Williams stealing home? I imagine the coach in Major League, he was in the hospital because he couldn't be there. He was like ch- uh, jumping on the – were you uh, fist pumping somewhere, I guess? Well, I was in my hotel room. So, um, and kind of one of those things, like, I saw him take off, and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, a soft clutch his helmet. And then I'm just uh, sitting there waiting because you know how umpires can just create. Like, Oh, yeah. I'm Let's like, get together. I'm Let's... like, hey, they're going to call time. Like, yep. there's going to be something. But yeah. – Hey, luckily not. It was a great play by Dixon. And love Dixon after that saying, hey, did that in the – went all the way back to the previous fall. Said that that scenario came up in the Purple Gold game. And, like, that, that had to make you feel good. Yeah. The guys are retaining yeah. information no from doubt. back then. So, no doubt. awesome stuff. All right, um, Coach, we are about out of time. Appreciate you joining us today, man. And uh, Glenn wanted to know what, what you do in the summer. Like, I know, Glenn's like uh, – Right now, a lot of work. We got to get through the draft uh, with our guys being here in summer school, um, trying to uh, just spend some time with them. Obviously, we can't teach them baseball stuff, but we're doing some mental game stuff with them just to get to know those guys. Um, we got a super talented group of incomers that are here in the summer, and I met with them on Friday and I said, "Hey, look, we're going to have more new guys than we have returners, and this is a great opportunity for you guys. But we're going to need some of you guys to grow up a little bit quicker." So. Mm-hmm. Some of you freshmen, you're going to be sophomores this fall, and we're going to coach you like that. So, um, But they're talented. They're a hardworking group um, to this point, so I'm excited to uh, get the fall started. On that note, all right, Josh, he reminded me to ask his question. Uh, who do we have to look forward to out of the bullpen this upcoming, you know, next season? That, like, are you, are you ready to give hey, out that list hey, today? Hey, or? Look, uh, I mean, I wouldn't even have said, like, Trey is savage, you know, back at this time going into his freshman year. So yeah. um, the fall is a time for guys to develop for them to earn um you know spots the roles um, but you guys can see i mean even the way the season goes and injuries roles evolve yeah guys step up i mean you look at what colby wallace did when starlin went down this year it was awesome it was awesome uh one regret we didn't get to see cam clunch uh, on the mound i understand we were getting close to that oh point, man we were very close, close. Hey, very close a couple <laughs> times so um but Klotz was a uh, keeping that thing fresh <laughs> <laughs> cliff thank you man enjoy thank you guys. for hanging out